Well, Control System by Absol. You know, I don't know much about this guy. I just got done listening to Absol's outro off of Section 80. I've always really liked that track. I like the, almost like the sense of panic in the drums, but the drums are real quiet, but then they kind of pick up again and then they settle down, but there's always just this like anxiousness in the drums. I've always liked that track. And then Absol, you know, what's your life about enlighten me? Just the way that he rattles that off. But other than that, I really don't know much about the guy. Uh, people have told me very good lyrically, so I'm looking forward to that. I got a message saying that, uh, which track is it? Rebellion, a Lori Joe. She committed suicide. Wow, I picked the right tab on the first guess. Uh, wow. <laughs> uh, I, I guess she committed suicide while this album was kind of concluding in its creation. I was reading a little bit of, of Wikipedia entry about it. Uh, Absol said that the album was basically done and he's glad because he doesn't think he would have been able to do it otherwise. She jumped off of a radio tower in Compton. Interesting. You know, um, when it comes to suicide, <clears throat> it bothers me that it's a taboo to discuss. I think it's something that should be discussed a little bit more openly. Our society seems to just be like, no, no, you can't do it. No, you can't talk about it. No, you can't consider it. No, just no, no, no. And it's like, look, if people are so far into whatever rabbit hole they're in that they're considering these ideas or having these thoughts, there's some discussion that needs to be had. Obviously, therapy and all that other stuff, but I'm a big fan of Alan Watts, who was a Buddhist philosopher basically from the 80s, 70s. And I remember watching something. There's all kinds of stuff on YouTube, Spotify, that you can listen to, lectures that he gave and what have you. He's talking about these monks who... There was a group of monks that said the only question worth considering is whether or not to commit suicide. And I've always really liked that little section where he talks about it just because when you present it like that, in my opinion, the idea does not become, oh, suicide is about escape and life is a trap and all this other stuff. It, it, to me, it kind of takes the whole idea and, and puts a rotation on it such that those of us who choose to stay here, we accept all of it. All of the aspects that come with life. There's nothing either on its own or accumulative that is a deal breaker to then make us decide, okay, no, I'm out, you know? And I like that concept because when you dig inside of it, there's a nice implied idea of we don't have control. We don't have a say. Life will happen and we're willing to accept whatever turns and twists come, even though they will be difficult, even though we won't like what's happening, even though there are things in the world that are ugly and disgusting and nasty, there are also goods and positives and the goods that contrast the bads are enough to say, yes, I choose to stay. I don't know. It's just an interesting thing. I, I've Ever since hearing him talk about that, Alan Watts talk about that concept of just, that's the only question worth considering. To me, it, it ultimately put my brain into a state of just relax. You know, it's, you're on the ride. You've chosen to get on the ride. You've chosen to stay on the ride. You're going to see it through and wherever it goes is where it goes. And so be it, you know? And the only reason why I tell that little story is because the name of the album is Control System. And some of these titles are really interesting. You've got uh, Bohemian Grove, which is like where people, like the elite apparently, meet to do some crazy, crazy wild shit. You know, terrorist threats, uh, double standards, mixed emotions, lust demons, Ill Illuminati, maybe, perhaps. I don't know. Rebellion, showing, I mean, there's some interesting titles to these tracks. The whole idea being control system. His name in the middle of the cover, Absol, is inside that fish, which is usually associated with uh, Christianity. 
So let's see where this goes. Uh, that's enough talking. It's a long album, <laughs> 17 tracks, an hour and 11 minutes. So we're going to be here for about three days. So let's drop in the track one, which is called Solo Ho, I guess. I don't know. Featuring Janae Aiko, which is she the girl that was in the video for Because the Internet? I forget the name of the track. I haven't listened to that. I haven't gone back to that very much, at least not recently. Anyway, that name seems familiar to me. It's produced by Dave Free and Soundwave. Uh, you know, this is Top Dog, so there's going to be some people that we recognize. But let's drop in one. Solo, Solo, Ho, I suppose. Track one. Absol. First time listening to Absol. This is a story about control. My control. Control of what I say. Control of what I do. And this time, I'm going to do it my way. I hope you'll enjoy this as much as I do. Are we ready? I am. Because it's all about control. Huh. And I've got lots of it. Solo ho. The one and only. You niggas know me. Your bitches want me. Determination. I got a grip. Nine five locs, I am not a crip. Blood, sweat, and tears, hotel tears. Your short term tall tales won't sell here. And Miss Aiko told me, let my soul sell here. Let me get a hell yeah. Open your eyes. You niggas know what it is. It's huh. <laughs> okay i'm not really not really feeling anything honestly right now I'm kind of i'm kind of surprised by the mix i suppose i don't know i didn't do any kind of palate cleansing you know in terms of music coming into this because i didn't really know what to expect um it sounds sounds a little flat Maybe with the sound, I don't know. I feel like there's something just kind of overall just flat to the production so far, but whatever. There was something I, I liked, where was it? It was something about being salty and then somersault. Summer salty that I made it the way I did. Oh, here we go. We can see you have steppin', I should somersault. Some are salty. So I like that. That was a cool little roll off of somersault to somersalty. This line kind of stands out to me though. The same reason why I'm stressed, the same reason why I'm blessed. I stopped praying and started planning. I stopped playing and I made it happen. And I, I specifically mentioned this because it's the inverse of what I just talked about at the beginning, right? Letting go and whatever it is, it is. Because praying, I, I mean, I understand what he's saying here. What he's saying is instead of just sitting around hoping things will work out and hoping, right? Instead of just like, please, God, let things... No, he's taking action and, and forcing things to happen. And I, I get that. that. And that's a that's a thing too. <clears throat> but you also have this concept of, okay, I, I'm, I'm mapping things out. You know, we mapped it out. Now the map is ours. I've raised my stats from all the records, checking all my... You know, talk about, okay, now I'm in control. But we're still not, you know? So I'm just, I'm just kind of touching on that. I don't want to fixate on that, but I want to just ping that idea right there because the album's called control system and I have no idea where it's going to go. But here we have just this idea of I'm taking action. Now I have control, but we, we don't have control, you know? So there we go. That that's all really. Let's keep rolling. I'm, the production. I don't know. Well, let's just keep rolling. I'm turning their heads and I'm earning respect. Grinning cause niggas ain't know I was next. Pinning this shit in the wind. Literate as Oscar Wilde. Bringing the terror and tearing the concert down. The split will get lit up till we look like we come from Chinatown. Good change in flow show. here. It's been a minute since I saw her smile. She's the reason why I go as hard as I do now. Fuck a phone cause I'm focused. It's four by focus. I'm prone to leave a vocal booth total for the right total. The bad boy, you boys, pussy is total. Or Dorothy's dog total. I'm telling niggas. We live one hell of a life. Still living. You know, in terms of the production, I mean, there's elements going on, but 
doesn't feel like the bass is really hitting that hard and the guitar sound that they're using is kind of flat and the drums aren't really like crisp or anything like that so the production's kind of i don't know it just feels like faded to me so we have our first little reference here to Lori, a Lori Joe. Missing a Lori Joe. It's been a minute since I saw her smile. She's the reason I go as hard as I do now. <clears throat> so I don't know how many times he's going to touch on that through this album. In the Wikipedia entry, he said it was mostly done. The album was. So we'll see. Kind of wasn't really into that track, but that's okay. Let's go on the track two, which is called track two, which is produced by Tay Beast. Track two is track two. <laughs> Here we go. Theo, what up, my nigga? E3, I'm gonna get you on these backwards. Last thing I do, nigga. Yeah. Oh, shit, nigga. Oh, shit, nigga. These niggas done done it again. Say, Beast, why you do that, man? Why the fuck you had to do that, man? This shit sound like a hundred birds under the courts and sheriff station. I told Reed that get off my sack. We really out here, my nigga. So every morning before I start recording, I just tweet a picture of the album cover for the reaction I'm doing on Friday. And somebody responded, this shit sounds like a hundred birds. <laughs> and I was like, I don't get it. But now I get it. Obviously. <laughs> when I roll through the city, you give me a rush. Yeah, I'm high off life, but I'm rolling blunts. Oh, I like that. And they couldn't wait for so to reappear. Click boom, TNT, TDE. We in here. Mm -mm -mm. I can smell fear from a mile away. You might as well get from round here. I run the town like Rock Nation, no exaggeration. And we start like abso, abstract, asshole. <laughs> Damn right, let them know. You got some kind of disease. I'm the illest in the business. <gasps> You ain't with the business, mind your business. Yeah, we like that hook, it almost seems like sarcasm. You know, especially that part, give the people what they need. And maybe it's just the delivery. I'm still not really, I'm still kind of cold on this, honestly. Which would be interesting, you know. Um, usually, usually every album that gets recommended, I'm, I, I get into it at some point. So far, I'm still kind of, just chill on this, but it feels, it almost feels like a, a sarcastic statement. Give the people what they need. Damn right. Let them know you got some kind of disease. I'm in the illest in the business. If you ain't with the business, mind your business. Cause he's talking about, and we stunting like absolute abstract asshole. So I want to almost wonder, let's click the annotation. Let's see what that says here. That's one of his ad libs used here to describe his approach. In the past, he experienced Stevens Johnson syndrome. What is that? But this time, he's got a good ill that's spread to his music, respected apart. The line, and we stunt and light, comes from Krishan's Gucci Gucci. Abs rhymes are more complex than usual rapper. Okay. Huh. Okay, so nothing too terribly insightful there. Flow like the Nile River. I used to, I used to, in the Navy, I knew a guy, his last name was Niles and he, he was great. And he was dating this one chick. It, well, he was not dating her. She was wanting to date him. And he was telling this story about how she was hitting on him one day. This and that. She's all, you know, I just want to flow down the river now. <laughs> we all just started laughing. The way he told the story was amazing. But anytime I hear the Nile River, I always think of Eric Niles from the Navy, who I knew. Great dude. Uh, I rise like Lazarus. I always forget who Lazarus is. Lazarus of Bethany, on the other hand, is a man from the Bible who Jesus rose from the dead. Okay. I always forget who Lazarus is. I get Lazarus and Judas mixed up. And those are two very different people who do very different things in the Bible. <clears throat> let's keep rolling. I'm not, I'm still just kind of cold on this, but let's keep rolling. Let's see how verse two plays out here. I never had shit, cause I never had shit. Same trucks, two years straight, doing bad shit. Sick, twist two splits out my dime bag shit. Piss, trying to get a good response out this bad bitch. Which <laughs> one of you niggas wanna call my bluff? Sinister literature, given from this wicked minister. Witness your future diminished, no present from Saint Nicholas in particular. You're just a thing of the past. I'm a diamond ring in the trash, no reason to brag, it's sad. It's sad. 
stunt like abso abstract asshole Give the people what they need <laughs> Damn right, let them know You got some kind of disease I'm the illest in the business What's your life about? Enlighten me there we go. There's a section 80 reference. You niggas must admire defeat. You lying like Nala, nigga. You know where to find a nigga. Carson in the house. The view, the village, Scotchdale, and right back around. But just imagine if Einstein got high and sip juice, broke rules, got pussy, beat up rookies on Pro Tools. You probably call his ass. So, brother number two. And I just took a number two. And ain't this track number two? I like the last verse there. I like the last verse quite a bit. He's talking about some people I don't know. You know, this opening verse is, or the opening line is from Absol's outro off of Section 80. What's your life about? Enlightening me. He's going to live on your knees or die on your feet. I love, I, I, I like that track quite a bit. Quite a bit. And then, you know, this part about Einstein. Just imagine if Einstein got high and sipped juice, broke rules, got pussy, <laughs> beat up rookies on Pro Tools. <laughs> You'd probably call his ass Soul Brother Number 2. So what is he referencing here? What is Soul Brother Number 2? Absol compares his intellect to Einstein, goes as far as to say if Einstein got high and sipped juice, he'd be more or less the same person. Okay. Notice he said, call his ass Soul Brother 2. To take a number two is like, oh, okay. So they're saying maybe that's a reference to just taking a shit. Track two, okay, yeah. All right, maybe, maybe. Yo, maybe that's something I'm missing too. Because I'm paying attention and, you know, he's, he's doing well. But I feel like I haven't really found anything to latch on to yet. But maybe he's operating at a deeper level that I'm not really picking up on. Hmm. So far, too, with the production, it is interesting. As I listen to more music and my tastes really start to settle in, there's production that I'm into, and so far, I'm not, not too into this one yet, but that's okay. That's okay. Let's keep going. Track three is called Bohemian Grove, produced by Teddy Beast and Dave Free. So this is the second time these guys are on this album. Doesn't look like there's any other features. Drop it in, Bohemian Grove. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> That's right. Motherfuck the government, motherfuck the system. Motherfuck you, I'm just living how I'm living. Patron with the lemon pineapple when the Sir Rock vanity. More homes than Sherlock family to roll through. Smoke up, fuck with a broader too. I'm broader than you. I'm slaughtering you. She ain't gotta be a genius to see it. I just hope the brain make me say, Jesus, she'll never leave me alone. Should I swear I just met shorty like 40 minutes ago and this ago. Man, I hope she don't think I think she a hoe. Got me harder than sneaking the bitch in Bohemian Grove. <laughs> yeah. One time for the women. What, what? Two times for the ladies. What, what? Three times for the bitches. <laughs> what, what, what? The bitches. I'm liking this track. This, so Bohemian Grove gets a heart. I really like the idea of she's got me harder than sneaking a bitch into Bohemian Grove. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I always used to think, uh, up until now, my favorite line for a description of hard was um, Talladega Nights and Ricky Bobby and <laughs> when the girl's crawling up on the table and you know they're doing all these funny like fucking animal noises and shit and he's all, are we going to get it on? She's like, oh yeah, it's good because <laughs> I'm harder than a diamond in an ice storm right now. I always thought that was very funny. This uh, This might be number one though. Because I imagine trying to sneak anybody, let alone yourself, into a more or less restricted area where the elites, Illuminati, whoever the fuck these weird people are, go to have their crazy fucking ritual things, right? It's probably very challenging. Very hard. Anyway, good line. I like the production on this. I like the older school sounds. <clears throat> I'm kind of finding that. I'm liking this one quite a bit. Who the fuck, though, is Sherlock family? Patreon... Patron with a lemon, pineapple in the Ciroc, vanity, more homes than the Sherlock family. Who the fuck is the Sherlock family? Oh, it's a playoff of... Oh, okay. So well, there are things I'm missing. More homes than Sherlock family. So he's saying Sherlock Holmes. Okay. Okay, good. 
Good. So it's, it's on me. I'm just, I'm just missing shit. <laughs> I'm missing a lot of shit. Okay. That's good. Because I was like, something isn't clicking. But if it's on me, then that's okay. More Homes is followed up by Vanity. Or is the follow-up to Vanity. They bought more homes out of Vanity. Sure. Makes sense. But Soul has more buddies than Sherlock has family. Which would be a bunch of homes. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. All right. I'll have to pay closer attention here. Well, let's keep rolling through here. Uh, smoke up. Fuck with a broader two. I'm broader than you. I liked how they broke off and said murder right there. I like I like the kind of like the flower, the opener, freer spirit in this track. I'm slaughtering you. She ain't got to be a genius to see it. I just hope the brain make me say Jesus Christ. No religion, which is surprising to me. I'm just so explicit. I coexist in places you would know never you would never know existed. And I did kind of find it interesting that he uses the word coexist after religion because that makes me think of those bumper stickers that are really annoying that have all the religious symbols on them because basically all of those groups hate each other and the sticker says coexist. Anytime I see those stickers I'm like the total lack of awareness of what's actually going on. Like I get the idea of what would be nice to do. Uh but there's a lot of uh, conflicting ideologies that exist in that sticker. Anyway, that's my own little personal rant on the sticker. Let's click the annotation, though, the coexist part. An idea that he has also discussed in Top Dog. Most of all, I need to exist in the fourth dimension. See, some of these, some of these annotations, man. Let's just read this all the way through, and we'll see. This is actually a very specific line referencing to either a different reality than the one we're experiencing on a day-to-day basis. He's either talking about astral travel or a spiritual plane. Soul retreats back to the name of the track Bohemian Grove in order to make sense of this line. He explains how he can coexist in a place such as the Bohemian Grove, which many citizens of the U.S. is unaware of due to secrecy and seclusion to only the most elite and powerful men of the world. Coming from the slums of Carson, California, Soul expresses his ability to coexist in various locations. Like, when I read that, I don't have enough knowledge or information to discredit that or disagree, but I just go, okay, you know, like, that's a lot. That's a lot to squeeze into these lines. And there's a lot of situations where I've seen fans basically take something that's written and just dump all this stuff into it. And I do the same thing. I do the same thing. Um, but... When I'm, when I'm experiencing an album, I'm exploring these lyrics, I'm also considering the idea that I'm probably just wrong. Like, this is just my interpretation, what I'm getting from it. When it's posted up as an annotation, they make it act like, oh, no, this is what it means. But I don't know, man. I don't know. Let's keep going. Let's, got, let's not get too snagged up here. This is a long-ass album, so we got work to do. Drop into verse two. Fuck the government, motherfuck the system Motherfuck you, I'm just living how I'm living yep. Hennessy and coke, 1800 We mixing dark and light like the 1800 And we getting blunted, what it do? <laughs> yeah, right there. Bet I got some weed like schoolboy Q Let the festivities begin We in here, we in here, we in here Where them hoes at, I'm sincere It's not dear, belly of the beast I might feast on my dear We night ride like Paul Revere Spilling my ties all on a brassiere. What, what? What, what? This was a meeting. Okay, this was this is what House said. Very soon, every American will be required to register their biological property for our fiat paper currency. Every American will be forced to register or suffer not being able to work and earn a living. The sin. They will be our chattel. Interesting. Interesting. So there's a whole bunch here after. Uh, let's read it. Because this part's really 
really interesting because Bohemian Go Grove is associated with elites and Illuminati and the people who secretly control everything and all this other stuff. He's saying control over this excerpt from whatever uh, that's talking about the people who would maintain maintain control over the world. Let's just let's just read this out. Now, having said that, I'll go back to this document. This was a meeting. OK, this is what was said very soon. Every American will be required to register biological property, a national system designed to keep track of the people and will operate under the ancient system of pledging by such methodology methodology. We can compel people to submit to our agenda, which will affect our security as a charge back for our fiat paper currency. Every American will be forced to register or suffer being unable to work and earn a living. It will be our chattel. And we will hold the security interest over them forever by operation of the law merchant under the scheme of secured transactions. I am 100% against a cashless society because if as soon as it goes cashless, we no longer have control over anything. It's over. If they decide, if they, you know, we'll just use the term loosely here. They decide, oh, no, uh, you didn't do what we wanted you to. And now your everything you own is locked. You can't you can't access it because it's digital only. There's a push. Anyway, I won't I don't want to rant on that too much. Let's keep talk, reading this excerpt here. Americans by unknowingly or unwittingly delivering the bills of lading to us will be rendered bankrupt and insolvent forever to remain in economic slaves through taxation secured by their pledges. They will be stripped of their rights and given a commercial value designed to make us a profit. And there will be none the wiser for not one man in a million could ever figure our plans. And if by accident wanted to figure it out, we have in our arsenal possible deniability. After all, this is the only logical way to fund government by floating liens and debt to the registrants in the form of benefits and privileges. This will inevitably reap us to huge profits beyond our wildest expectations and lead every American a contributor to this fraud, which we will call social insurance. Without realizing it, every American will insure us for any loss we may incur in this manner. Every American will unknowingly be our servant. However, begrudgingly, the people will become helpless without any hope for their redemption. And when we employ the high office of the president of our dummy corporation to the foment this plot against America. I would love to see somebody say, oh, no, that's not true. I mean, just fucking look around. Just look around at what's going on, especially when you have somebody like, well, I mean, Trump was such a disaster, but Joe Biden as president, the guy, the guy, he's, he's, a he's, I mean, he's almost literally a puppet. Like he can, he, he's so old and so tired and his poor brain is trying so hard. I mean, he's he's kind of perfect, honestly. For anybody who wants to control somebody, he he can't. He just can't do it on his own. He doesn't have enough wherewithal on his own, in my opinion. And I don't really have strong opinions about his presidency so far. But I mean, the fact that he is president is it's. it's that's concerning just because I don't feel like he is the president. I feel like he's the face in front of whoever is telling him what to do. And really, it's supposed to be the other way around, right? But I don't think that it is anymore. Even with Trump, even, and he was such a fucking just oddball motherfucker, man. Trump is the weirdest. I, I honestly feel like Trump is one of the most insecure people on the planet. Like he was literally president of the United States and yelling at people on Twitter. Like, <laughs> wow, wow. Anyway, let's move on. Interesting track. And I, I'm harping on this. I'm focusing on this because it's called Control System, Bohemian Grove. We're kind of diving in a little bit. So let's move on to track four, which is called Terrorist Threats. It's got Danny Brown. Cool. Jenny Aiko, I think is how you pronounce her last name. Dave Free. Let's drop into Terrorist Threats and hear this one. Alistair Crowley. Oh. Alistair Crowley was, uh, he was big into the occult. I don't know much about him, but I know he was, yeah. He was dubbed the wickedest man in the world by popular press. Huge occult person. Yeah, yeah. You guys can't see the picture on the screen. I've got it slid over. Here, here I'll show you. I'll move the thing. Look at that. Ooh, creepy, right? 
The occult is something that's is somewhat interesting to me, but not being religious makes it hard to buy into because there's a lot of references to like Satan and it gets weird. It's interesting, but it's weird. And it's, it's, well, yeah, well, kind of like I said, if you're, if you're not religious in any serious fashion, it's hard to buy into, but you know, there you go. Oh shit. Wish I could see all the Selassie, I Maybe my sovereignty will still be mine If all the gangs in the world unify We stand a chance against the military tonight Interesting I said we stand a chance against the military tonight I said we stand a chance against the military tonight And I Babylon, Babylon At my window all I see is Babylon On the news all I see is Babylon And all niggas do is just Babylon Money and hoes, more money and hoes If I sold dope I'd have plenty of flows I was from the projects like J-Rock I would have more than likely slang rock. That's why I had to write this. Interesting man. production. My niggas on the corner selling water. There's somebody daughter fluctuating prices, man. What's neat too is it's called terrorist threats. And I the way I'm taking this is the idea of like, so you take the end of Bohemian Grove and this whole transcript about how you know these powerful elite people how they're going to enslave America the world through these systems and blah 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 right and so that's the plan right we're going to enslave you they're going to incur all the losses they're going to be our slaves begrudgingly do all of our work for us they won't be able to stop us blah 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 we'll use the law we'll use the president we'll use the structures that exist to do this to make it happen and, and when you have a system of control like that in place or trying to be in place, the idea of, I just want to be free, I don't want to be nobody's chattel, becomes a terrorist idea. Because all you have to do when you're the state, you create laws and you go, these are the laws and this is how we protect the state and blah, blah, blah. And if you're against that, you're against the state, therefore you are a terrorist. So if you're against the idea of a system who says, no, you're going to be our, our chattel, you're now a terrorist because you're against the state. And this is why I'm very much against censorship because this is why I think the left has things really wrong because they want to censor this and censor that, although the right does too. I, I don't know. The, the two extreme sides are just both so fucking stupid. I can't stand either. The left pushes me to the right and the right pushes me to the left constantly because I can't stand either side. The, the, the extreme ends are just so absurd. But when it comes to censorship, the idea, oh, we, we got to stop people from talking this, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that sounds great when it's your people making that decision. But as soon as the role flips, all of a sudden, oh, shit, now you can't talk about what you think is important. So censorship, which overall, in my opinion, is bad. What is the Cilicia's eye? What is that? Referencing former emperor of Ethiopia, returned Messiah of the Bible, God incarnate, according to Rastafarians. Who can he considers in the uh, blah 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 Babylon? In the religion Rastafari, Babylon referred to all Western culture and ideas. Babylon was the pejorative for Western ideas and modern of modernity i can't pronounce that capitalism materialism colonialism racism it's a metaphor if he had the same third eye penelia gland or vision as celesi the first a ruler who kept ethiopia a sovereign nation maybe he would have never lost mental freedom i don't know about that but i like the statement after that if all the gangs in the world unified we stand a chance against the military tonight which is true if every American citizen, I mean, how many hundreds of millions of guns exist in this country? If everybody stopped fighting each other and went, hey, those people are our enemy. And that's why that's why I think right now, that's why the culture wars are so um, promoted and so pushed and so just constant in our ears, in our faces all the time. Culture war, culture war, culture war. Hate your neighbor. Don't hate the corporation. Don't hate fucking Exxon that pulled in 26 billion in profits, in profits or whoever it was, Exxon or fucking Shell or somebody. Don't hate them. Don't hate them. Don't come after the CEOs of those companies. No, 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 no. Go after your neighbor because he's got a fucking Biden sign in his lawn or a Trump flag on his truck. 
go after your neighbor because they're raising their son to be transgender and they're okay with it instead of you, you know, you're all these fucking little dividers, right? To keep us just gnashing at each other rather than focusing on, in my opinion, is the bigger problem. This is going to be a wild video. <laughs> it's funny because last week there was a track where I was reading through the annotations and one of the words, I didn't know what it was, so I clicked on it and found out it was a slur. <laughs> And I made the joke, oh, I'm canceled. Fuck, I'll probably get canceled for this one just because, you know. The, what is it? What's the Alex Jones saying? Who's another fucking psychopath? Like, just how do all these people, how do they get such a following? That's what breaks my brain. How do all these fucking psychopaths have so many people going, yeah, that's our guy? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> it, I, it, it drives me nuts. It drives me absolutely nuts. Let's keep going. I've This is going to be a four-hour video. Let's keep going. This is an interesting song. Uh, so I'm going to keep the idea, like I was saying, terrorist threats. Anything that's against, that, that threatens the state, the, the nation, the law, the structure, the control system. Anything that threatens that is a terrorist. So let's, let's move on through the song here. I said we stand a chance against the military tonight. I said we stand a chance against the military tonight. <laughs> AK clips they extra peel. Smoking on some of that extra kill. Purple Urkel that Jaleel. Urkel Jaleel. Nice. If we could link up a gang, and niggas is willing to bear the pain, we put the White House lights out too. Yeah, huh? Okay, gang, gang. We more than like we the black KKK. Don't forget my AKA Mayday. P or your PhD or your AA. Extra bills, extra bills. Nose can I ring like sofa ring. My baby needs our information. So bad this stuff like Oprah Green. Pull around, come back Oprah Green. Top blue off low fuss and teeth. Get lined up like homeless me. Fill out if in the hobby and homeless feel. Okay, okay, okay. Don't try to stop again in my way. You'll get stumped like a Broadway play. AK Melee, make it out bay, okay. Feel my pain, going insane. I'm ashamed. Cause I ain't got shit but an EBT card from a fiend that owe me in a center daughter name. How the fuck is they post to eat? How the fuck am I supposed to eat? Got a nigga in the streets, no health care, trying to slang weed to the butt shoes on the feet. So fuck you, you don't give a fuck about me. Can't get a job if they drug test me. Got a nigga stressed up, press, got a fella in the chest, and a world strip of happiness. I ain't got no gavel, I ain't trying to fight nobody best. I just wanna be free, I ain't finna be nobody chat. I like that one. I like that one a lot. And you think about, you know, this, what's great too is in the second verse, Absol throws in some shit where he's basically, you know, poking fun at conspiracy theorists and, you know, th these crazy ideas, right? And, you know, so he's got this, this line of, I seen an, Im an image of Hitler in the picture when the Twin Towers dropped, right? And, and so one thing that I find very interesting is how the the term conspiracy theory has become a phrase for crazy talk but the term conspiracy theory just means well a conspiracy is multiple people working together somewhat you know in secret to have an outcome that's all they're going to conspire together going to work together to try and create an outcome that's it and then the theory is trying to understand who is doing that and what they're doing. And that's it. That's all that is. It's very fucking straightforward. But now anytime somebody discusses anything that's outside of what we're allowed to believe based on who, you know, whichever fucking political alley you're in or societal alley or whatever, right? Now it's a conspiracy theory. It's crazy talk. You're not, if you can't believe that. You can't even discuss it. If you do, you're crazy. And what always gets me is, you know, the idea that you can't even talk about something. Mm. And remember, I was talking about that earlier with, with you know, the idea of suicide. And I, actually, I don't know if I actually mentioned that. I think I was thinking that, but I, I don't like how it's taboo. It's not discussed, et cetera. Discussion to me is huge. It's huge. That's just the exploration of an idea, of a topic. It's how we communicate with each other. It's how we understand each other. It's how we know... It's how we learn. I mean, there's so many things about discussion that are vital to us as a society. And anytime I hear somebody say, we need to censor this, 
you can't talk about that. It's a conspiracy theory. Misinformation. Like, I mean, misinformation is real, sure. But if it's false information, then just present the true information to squash it. But no, 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 no. <laughs> it's misinformation. Can't talk about it. And then you get the fucking corporate media stuff. And then you get social media. Stuff. I mean, it's just everything has gotten extremely complex and difficult. Which, if you think about a broader picture of a control system, is good for the system because now you can't break through it. There's all these layers. There's all these boundaries and hindrances. You can't talk about it. That's not true. It's misinformation. It's conspiracy theory. But just listen to what fucking Danny's talking about right here. Uh, going into the third verse because I, you know, I, was, I was proud of Absol for making fun of conspiracy theories and then I got fucking way up on my soapbox, right? Feel my pain going insane. I'm ashamed because I ain't got shit but an EBT card from a fiend that owes me and is in her daughter's name. How the fuck is they supposed to eat? How the fuck am I supposed to eat? Got people in the streets, no health care, trying to slang weed just to put shoes on his feet. So fuck you. You don't give a fuck about me. I mean, how much poverty exists in this country right now? We're the wealthiest country in the world in the history of the planet. And there's so much poverty. There's so many people suffering. Sounds like there's a system out there that's in control of the wealth, right? Anyway, you know, I go on and on about this, but I also feel like it's just very fucking obvious. Let's move on to track five, which is called Pineal Gland, produced by TB. Let's drop in. This is an interesting album. I'm, I'm warming up to it now. The first two tracks I wasn't really hot on, but three and four, it's clicking with me. I'm having fun now. Oh, uh, it was all a dream. I swear it never happened. I wrote like Edgar Allen. I was po like Edgar Allen. Let me Edgar hit Allen Poe, okay. You know I really need that. Missing screws, bending rules like kneecaps. I don't even know what's real, I'm just being real Making moves, you're just another human being, being still Play the fool, you jealous dudes are just to play the fool Tell the huh. truth, I'm the coldest cat, saber tooth Place the bull, place the Buddha, this ain't hookah You hit this shit a few times, you might see the future Ask my nigga Blocker, we be rolling up that Blanca Just retire, <laughs> Blanca, my life is wow. fire, I might blow your Blocker I gotta pause, cause there's a lot going on here I'm, I'm finally starting to, s to settle into his style I'm finally starting to kind of hear what he's actually saying Play the fool, you jealous dudes are just a plate of food I don't I don't really get that, but it is a good playoff. Play of food, play the fool, play the food, and then jealous dudes play the food. Like maybe you're staring at somebody else's plate, like you're hungry or something. You want to eat? Tell the truth. I'm the coldest cat, <laughs> saber tooth, which is an extinct, frozen in the ice cat. Kind of makes sense, which is cool. Blaze the booth, blaze the Buddha. This ain't hookah. <laughs> my my guys, Blanca. We were rolling up that Blanca. What was, where was this? There was something about your mind. Maybe it was in the hook. Enjoy your mind trip, but don't trip on your mind. No man is safe from the war going on outside. The way I take that is, if you're taking these drugs and you're having these experiences and you know, you're piercing the veil and you're seeing reality for what it is and blah, blah, blah. Don't trip on your mind. I take that as, yeah, that's great. But guess what? No one is safe from the war going on outside. So you may have this totally different view of the universe, existence, the world, society, whatever. Great. Doesn't fucking matter. Don't trip on your mind. Don't trip over the idea of that's what it really is because that doesn't change what's fucking happening. The war outside. This is fucking great. And he might be tripping off that DMT. God, I want to talk about DMT now because I have a friend who did it. He told me about his trip. and It was just wild. I'll share it real quick. He was in a bad group of friends, like not great, right? Not terrible, but he was going down the wrong road. Okay, sure. Does DMT. He had it injected. For those of you who don't know DMT, it's a very short trip. The brain consumes it during high, uh, ang not anxiety, like high uh, intense experiences, like near-death experiences. Your body will naturally produce DMT and then your body consumes it. So it's a very fast trip. So he had his injection. He's laying on the couch. His friends like were helping him out. He's laying there and he said he started feeling really, really cold and his chest started feeling really tight. And then he felt like this tugging sensation, tugging, 
chugging. And then he was out. He was above his body, kind of like three or four feet up. He could like look around and see. And he could see everybody in the room and he could see himself laying there. And he he said he felt like panicked at first because he didn't know what was going on. But then when he saw himself and he saw that he was okay, he was like, okay. And then as soon as he went, okay, gone. Off, off the planet, into space, flying through the solar system, flying through the galaxy, flying, just going, 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 going. Like just faster than the speed of light beyond the universe is just, go, just going, right? <laughs> And then he stops. Then there's nothing. But there were three, I think he said there were three beings that were there. And he knew they were there because they were communicating with him telepathically. And they told him, this is who you are. This is what you're doing. And this is what's going to become of your life if you don't change your ways. And then they flung him back into his body. <laughs> he said... He was fucking crying, like it just total life changing. Ditched all of his friends, joined the Navy. I mean, just total one eighty. Stopped doing drugs for a while. Oh, he's he's doing drugs again now, but more psychedelics and stuff. But wild, wild. And I've read a couple of books on DMT. And, you know, people doing uh, experiments and stuff like that, like controls and just testing. And there's been some amazing positive trips, and there have been like horrific hellish nightmare trips that I'm not even going to mention. They're I just the descriptions that I've read in these books are awful, awful, awful. But DMT, there you go. Let's keep going. I'm going to back it up a little bit because I did stop at verse two. I, I, so let me back it up like 10 seconds or so. But this is fascinating. Speak or so they say I could still be asleep. The black sheep running with a pack of wolves, diamond in the rough. Tell Brock I need a pack of wolves. I don't know who Brock is. Two white cups full of codeine. Plus I got two white sluts down to blow me. Can't you see I'm floating like root beer and ice cream? My snatches act like lightning. Probably why I'm so enlightening. Probably why these niggas can't fuck with me. I'm looking like who the fuck invited them. <laughs> they failed in testing like what's inside of them. Shitted in the crater. Last time I sat on Saturn. Got a letter from Andromeda. They trying to shrine my bladder. <laughs> no, this is crazy. So just spirit molecules and geometric patterns. They call DM DMT the spirit molecule. That's one of the things that they call it. Geometric patterns, obviously, if you're hallucinating, you're seeing different shapes and what have you. Uh, they failed intestine, like what's inside of them. Intestines, intestine, you failed your test. Intestine is what's inside of you. This is kind of neat. I'm finally starting to click with his writing style. Pretty neat shit. Can't you see I'm floating like root beer and ice cream? My synapses act like lightning. Probably why I'm so enlightening. This is fucking neat, man. Let's keep rolling. I know I've been talking forever. We're already an hour in, and it's not. We're not even through five songs yet. On your mind trip, but don't trip on your mind. No man is safe from the war going on outside. That's right. You ever been conscious in a coma? Please don't tell my mama this ain't marijuana. The new nucleus never sitting in the cell. Genius, idiot, best description of myself. I'm in the fucking lab cold rhyming this higher shit. When I die, <laughs> donate my organs to science, bitch. You got three eyes, three eyes, three eyes. So you got three eyes, three eyes, three eyes. Oh, it's slowing down. <laughs> Interesting track. I want to click the annotation here. You got three eyes, but you can never see eyes because I don't really understand what we're going for here. Before the function of the pineal gland was known, it was thought to be a third eye. When taking DMT, you feel as if you can see out your third eye. That idea being your third eye being, how can I even explain this? Like kind of like, you know, the, there's so much of the brain that works as a filter, as a blocking function. You know, we block out senses, we block out sound and sight and, and all these different things so that we can function because too much stimulus, we just, our brains freak out. We can't handle it. <clears throat> and then there's also the fact that our senses only detect certain things. Like we can only see a certain amount of wavelength. We can only smell certain things. We can only hear certain things. So there's so much of existence that we can't even perceive with our senses. So the third eye idea is being able to pick up on that. Uh, but I don't understand. 
but you can never see eyes. Absol ends the outro claiming that even though you've reached high alignment, you still don't amount to him in TDE. I don't know about that. I don't know about that at all. This could be referencing the high power movement, which is spelled with three eyes. I mean, that makes sense, but I don't know, whatever. This verse three, I'm in a whole other realm, go to hell. Last guy tried to scratch the surface, broke a nail. Last guy tried to cross the line, got crucified. I feel like they're talking about, he's talking about Jesus on this one, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Some of these annotations, <laughs> a couple of them are not, not approved annotations. Oh, uh oh, the control system. We're not allowing discussion, right? <laughs> now, what it really means is, you know, people are just kind of throwing their ideas out there and it hasn't really been bought into yet. But interesting track, really interesting track. I like that one. That one's got a heart. We're three in a row now. So we're on a bit of a roll. Let's move on to track six, which is called Double Standards. It's featuring Anna Wise, produced by Soundwave. Dropping in track six. I like the sound already. One time for your mind. Oh. I should know that. One time, one time. Is that, that's off of Illmatic, right? That's Nas. One time, one time for your mind. He with the homies. He with the homies. No squares in the circle. Nobody phony. me. He with the homies. He with the homies. We don't love them hoes. Let's get this money. He got a main chick, been with her for a while, love making, him making out, fellas in his ear, you acting like a queer, you going on dates, you trying to get this cake, the new pressure keeps setting in, if you a real man, you a fucking friend, head saying no, other one saying yes, yeah. this girl girlfriend been with it, it's scandalous. So I want to pause real quick to say that I'm, I'm slightly confused by the double standard, I, I, I have an idea, but... What's throwing me off is, you know, they're saying if you're a real man, you'd fuck her friend. And, you know, one, one head saying no, the other saying yes. Obviously, that's pretty straightforward right there, right? His girl's girlfriend been with it. It's scandalous. Unfasten her clothes. What she won't tell a soul. Thrill them all. Got, a, got him off. Case closed. He hesitated. And she say, why you push me? If you don't get this pussy, then you're, then you're a pussy. And then we drop into this double standard. So I guess she's expecting him to have sex with her. And the double standard being guys just do that. But he's tired of this. Let's keep going. I, you know, I'm just, I'm not 100% on, on page with what's going on here. And his friends are making fun of him. You know, you're going on dates. We're trying to get this cake. When the pressure gets to setting in, you know, let's keep going. But I am slightly unsure as to what exactly we're talking about what exactly the double standard is here she with the girls she with the girls hair done nails done no care in the world she with the girls she with the girls they all wifey material yes sir she want a boyfriend she been missing out on love making him making out she ain't having the best luck everybody to chop oh, it up right only want to cut one of her girlfriends got one. She's been jealous of the relationship since day one. But last week he made a pass at her. She knew she had him harass a little better. I'm buttoned his jeans and then she fell to her knees. She finally found company for her misery. My auntie told me always treat my lady right. My uncle told me only love him for the night. You can see the immediate disconnection between the man and the woman, the reason for regression. For example, you heard of Amber Cole. But you don't know that nigga that was getting dull. I'm saying we heard of Amber Cole, but we don't know that little nigga that was getting dull. Huh. I'm going to pause right there before he keeps going. I'm going to click the annotation for this. Amber Cole was a 14-year-old girl who was recorded performing oral sex on a classmate behind the school. Video went viral after being posted online, causing Cole to receive a large amount of scrutiny. Continue with the song's theme. Soul is pointing out how Cole was the only one to receive any kind of backlash. Right. While most people don't even know the name of the boy. Right. Who's just as guilty. Right. Totally agree with that. Absolutely agree with that. Same thing recently with like those fucking cops. I guess there was like five or six cops. One of them was a female. They were all married and, you know, they're all sleeping with the female officer. And like everybody knows who's everybody knows who the female officer is. But like nobody's talking about the guys. They're all married. They're all guilty of the same thing. And so 
that's clearly a double standard. Clearly. Um, and I suspected I was okay, but some of the earlier lines was, were throwing me off. But, you know, right here, this, this, this is exactly what the double standard is. My auntie told me, always treat my lady right. My uncle told him, love him for, only love him for a night. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it, I have a hard time connecting with this song on a personal level just because I met my wife. We, we met each other when we were in the seventh grade. <laughs> we were friends through grade school and high school, started dating in senior year in high school, been with each other the whole time, you know, great relationship, very happy, very loving, all that stuff. And so, yeah, it's, it's hard for me to, I mean, I, I don't disbelieve it or anything, but it's hard for me to connect with it just because, yeah, but then society, society's so fucking weird too. <laughs> this is a cool album because we're just, we're all over the place. Bohemian Grove and terrorist threats, you know, the, the state and the rules and the pineal gland, which is the mental spot. Now we're at double standards. We're kind of getting into love and relationships and how society looks at certain things. It's starting to make the cover make more sense. I was looking at the cover because it's got all these symbols and circles and things going on. I didn't really understand what was going on. But I feel like we're just touching on all these categories. Cool track. I like the little piano bits that they got it in here. Let's keep going. Let's finish it up. There's like a couple. There's about a minute left. Cool little guitar sound. Cool track. I like that one. I like that one quite a bit. Now we're rolling into a track called Mixed Emotions, which is an interesting follow-up. It's produced by Brandon Blue. Was there one other thing I wanted to say about this? No, this one's pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. And I've already been ranting quite a bit so far this morning. <laughs> Uh, how many symbols are here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 symbols. I don't know what any of them mean on the cover there. All right, track seven is called Mixed Emotions. Here we go. What's up with the situation, Ja? One time for my niggas, hold up, yup. out the speakers coffee cups with lids this way nobody accidentally ashing in my shit got a few <laughs> two liters and it's about to go now finnegan is the prescription of choice just call us the finnegan boys i do all this shit just to say get off my dick you think you know but you have no idea it's an interesting song i do have mixed emotions about it it feels very unbalanced in, in like in an emotional sense, in a delivery sense, this vocal style, which is kind of cool given the title of the track. But I was, I almost said on the previous song, uh, Double Standards Hell, I was finally feeling more comfortable with his, his lyrical style, his vocal delivery, because it is a little different and I'm not totally into it. Uh, but he was clicking with me the last couple tracks. And then, and then now he's in this weird space again. I want to click on this annotation for you think you know, but you have no idea. This is a reference to the MTV show Diary, which looked at the everyday lives of celebrities. <laughs> oh, it had the same tagline. You think you know, but you have no idea. Okay. Okay. Sure. At least there's a solid reference there. But what's interesting, he's talking about doing all these drugs, getting all fucked up, and we're getting screwed up like the neck of Frankenstein. Great line. I like that one a lot. I do all this shit just to say, get off my dick. You think you know, but you have no idea. And I wonder, hmm. Hmm. Let's keep going. Ideas are somewhat coalescing in my brain, but I don't want to say something too soon. There's still two minutes of music left. Let's see what the next verse says. And, uh... 
Yeah, let's see what the next verse says, and we'll see if we can get an idea for what this song is about. I got this funny little dream of buying out the bar. Then flexing in my section like a fucking star. They ask me what I like to drink, and I say I'm alright. Then all you see is my purple sprite glistening off of the strobe light. No Jolly Ranchers, please. This act is all I need. I hope it ain't cliche to shoot Pimp C or R.I.P. As well as DJ Screw since I made up this tune about lean. But that's a blade. All I see is the like section A. Coming down, still sipping. Draped up, dripped out, still sipping. Uh. I love the cold. Interesting. You know. Gotta let it show. I love the cold. Hey. You know, the line, you think you know but you have no idea is incredibly accurate for me right now. I have no idea. Especially this part, you know, the lights are low, the mood is right, I got a foe, I got a foe, who got a Sprite, who got a Sprite, who got a Sprite, you know? It, it's like this sense of almost mockery. And he talks about as well as, you know, I hope it ain't cliche to shoot Pimp C in R.I.P. as well as DJ Screw since I made up this tune about Lean. You know, the, the idea of this being cliche, this idea of, you know, going to the bar and getting fucked up and, and, and flexing and, you know, by buying it out and, but then, you know, coming from a person who's also talking about piercing the veil, oh, opening the third eye and interesting. It, this is really interesting. I feel like the, the only thing I can really pull from this is just the idea of mixed emotions, the conflict between you know, trying to be a person who's enlightened, enlightening others, trying to kind of you know, raise up from some of these, I don't know what I call them, like primitive levels or, or, or whatever, right? But wanting to be that, wanting to do that, wanting to, I don't know, break free from this control system. That is kind of existence in a way, you know, existence. I, I, it's so easy for me to rant about, you know, government or corporate media or, or whatever, right? That's easy to do. But really life in itself is a control system. There are so many things we cannot do. We don't even have control over our own body. I can't even fucking grow hair, <laughs> right? Right. That, like there's so many things like if I have to sneeze, I can't stop myself from sneezing. Like there's just so many things that happen within our own bodies. We have no control over. And so in a sense, we're like a prisoner to these weird vessels right <clears throat> and so that's kind of what i get from this is like you, this contrast between what he's talking about in track five pineal gland and here mixed emotions because it's like he's almost making fun of himself or or upset with himself for being drawn into something like you know fucking purple drink and sprite and weed and you know enjoying that or or being drawn toward that and then it, it comes off of double standards too. This is a cool fucking album. It's it's finally starting to click a little bit for me. Initially, I didn't really know where the hell we were. I wasn't connected with the production a whole lot, but this is this is interesting. Let's move on to track eight. It's called Sopa. It's featuring uh, Schoolboy Q, who is an artist people have recommended to me over and over and over again. I am interested. No, I don't know when I'm going to do it. I would like to, just like all the other albums out there, right? Produced by Nez and Rio. Track eight is SOPA. It's all caps here. It's not on Spotify. I don't know if this is an uh, an abbreviation or an acronym, but it will drop in. Track eight, SOPA. Solo taught me. Joseph Coney, chip off the blocks, his puffy socks in my Sikonis, I touch stock, she suck cock, she dances secret Sundays, and I'm about to pray, smoking dope, smoking 
I'm smoking dope. She got that magical vaginal. Let me focus, poke. Roll, roll, roll my boat gently down your stream. She into Alexander McQueen, but she ain't met the king. Solo, 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 solo. Kiss the fucking ring. Yo, TDE, we got the belt. SOPA equals Stop Online Piracy Act, a thus far unsuccessful bill to censor and control the distribution of copyrighted material. <laughs> okay, so that's what SOPA is. I'm smoking dope, you can smell it on my clothes. SOPA trying to censor internet, we trying to get the sex set. Look back at me when you hit the pole. Oh, swag's so mean on the fucking hole. Oh, that's your bitch. Well, bro, she on me. I made her lick my sack, then work the top, then fuck the homie. <laughs> Got the block hot, cause I sold it off. No, I'm not. Wheezy, bitch, I'm wheezy from that chronic cough. Uh, <laughs> you can smell it in my beard. Have no fear. Savior of the gangster rap is fucking here. In the views, they always asking me about a list. Knowing damn well I'm looking like I'm slanging bricks. That was the ex, soon get a half a ticket. Think I'm lying, just ask Jimmy that check was mine. So that we I'm smoking dope. I don't, I don't really know how I feel about this track. It's really just kind of odd. The beat's kind of odd. It's called SOPA, which is Stop Online Piracy Act. It, it references it in the chorus, but the song isn't really about that. It seems, I don't really know what this song is about. I like this. I'm not wheezy, bitch. I'm wheezy from that chronic cough. <laughs> wheezy, of course, I, I believe is an artist. It's not, it's not annotated here, so I can't click on it. But that's just funny. Have no fear. Savior of the gangster rap is fucking here. And they're talking about Figaro. Figaro. Which is a street. I collect the annotations. I guess the street where he was doing his thing. In interviews, they always ask me about a list, knowing damn well I'm looking like I'm slinging bricks. <laughs> oh my god, this is a weird song. I mean, I guess it's cool, but I, I'm thrown off because I feel like there's so many things I've missed from Absol because of the way he writes, he he slips things in, kind of under a second level that if you don't pay close attention to it, you'll miss it. And so with this song, I feel like I'm not getting anything, which makes me think I'm missing it. So then I look into it, but then I'm not getting anything. And I'm just kind of stuck in this weird little cycle. Huh? Well, let's finish it up. About a minute left. Give me, hey, give me some, okay? Give me some. Shit, give me some. Shit. Shit, I ain't uh, quit, nigga. I wanna fuck your wife. I have no idea what that song's about. <laughs> no idea. I, no idea. I'm completely fucking lost on that one. Completely lost. The the part with the girl saying solo taught me, solo taught me. Wasn't there? Wasn't there a track? It was it was Yeezy taught me. It was it, I think it was a Kanye track. It's been a forever since I've heard it. It was but it was like this and that blah blah, and then it's the girl going Yeezy taught me Yeezy taught or somebody like that something like that. I don't remember. I wonder if that's kind of a nod to that. I have no idea what to say about Sopa. So we will move on to track nine, which is called Lust Demons. Featuring BJ, the Chicago Kid, and J Rock, produced by Tay Beast. Track nine is Lust Demons. I like how we're starting out. Me. Give me some of that, give me some of that, that. Hey, 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 I know what you like, I know what you want, I know what oh, you fuck need. Yeah. I know how to put you out, yo. Misery, A, B, S, O, U, L, infinity. When it comes to the possibilities, anytime you are my vicinity. And I beat it up, yeah, I beat it up, yeah, I beat it up. Just like this, my enemy. All night, I can't resist. This I is fucking like great. 
If you dismiss, so don't give me kiss, kiss. It'll be hard digesting. Yeah. Give me some of that, give me some of that, that sweet, that nasty, that good stuff. Back it up till a nigga say that's enough. Mirror on the ceiling, ain't thing looking up. Uh, sweetie, I'm trying to get a damn like a sweet tea. Uh, it's like sweet tea. I need things. This is fucking great. This is great. Oh my god. This is my favorite track so far. This is definitely my favorite track. I love the production. I love the theme. I love the the the, the flow. This is great. This is fucking fantastic. Honestly, this is kind of what I've been missing you know this album so far has been hit and miss but this is fantastic she know my motives trying to get behind it like a locomotive she trained she on the right track and she got the boomerang then i put my right back she rap, she nasty <laughs> she got a ring on her tongue got a ring on the clip got my hands on my ykk sipping down and she all on my tip she told me look at me when i work my magic daddy she pull a rabbit out of hat me my dick disappear and then there she brought it right back <laughs> Ranking, be keep on oh my I god I love this portion right here. This is so good. You know, something I really like about that track, too, is it's called Lust Demons. You've got these lines in here at the end of the chorus, because I just can't resist you. Goddamn Lust Demons. And the music is so alluring, right? Like, what do you want to do? You want to put it on again and listen to it again. And so it kind of thematically, it goes really well. The production itself is just great, but it matches the theme really well. And the idea of a Lust Demon... This, this thing that hounds you and you just can't resist it. You know, it, f it fits into some of the themes that are existing within the album. Like track seven, I was talking about mixed emotions and how it seems like he's kind of making fun of himself a little bit or just unhappy with himself for wanting to just drink and do stuff like that. And now you've got this other vice, right? That he just can't resist, can't resist. Some good lines too. Both, both of these verses were really good. Uh, well, where was it? She knows my motives, trying to get behind it like a locomotive. She trained. She's on the right track. I mean, she's fucking great little word plays right there. Uh, Absol had some good shit in his verse too. But I honestly, I like the delivery, the vocal, the flow was really fucking good. When it comes to the possibilities, anytime you're in my vicinity, I'll beat it up. Yeah, I'll beat it up. <laughs> I'll beat it up like it's just like it's my enemy. Oh my god. Hmm. Good track. Let's move on to track 10, which is called Illuminate. Uh, featuring a guy by the name of Kendrick Lamar. I believe I've heard of him. I think I know who he is. Uh, produced by Sky Hutch. Track 10 is Illuminate, but it's spelled, it's kind of emphasized ill illuminate. So Maybe the idea of the song is the downsides of trying to become enlightened and, you know, as you grow awareness. The statement, ignorance is bliss, is absolutely true. When you don't know of all these terrible things that are happening, you can be happy. But as, as you educate and learn and illuminate, it can be uh, difficult to process sometimes. Here we go. Track 10, Illuminate. Back when I first grabbed that pen, I told myself I was going to win, and I ain't no win, but it was going to end, dub happening, in, I won't end, so you can take your top five list, dead or alive, and put me after the M, I'm a fucking genius, gripping my fucking penis, living this life, you can't tell me nothing, still ain't really got no money, fucking right, I'm all about that real, about that real, this ain't no motion picture, I tell you how that feel, how that even when the odds against you They wanna see me wear polo drawers Put two chains on and that ain't wrong But that ain't me I go too damn hard on me Clothes and jewelry to stand out Black lip nigga with his hair wild Too damn proud but Killing it since Cam Oh boy, oh boy, I'm the man now uh -huh. PDE, put the money in my hand Ain't shit free Spin this quicksand and I won't think Put the pistol in my hand and I won't think Oh cool You just made room for Very the next cool. to be 
I've never been afraid to say what I want to say when I want to say it. Okay, then. I'm going to pause real quick because at the very top here, it says, so you can take your top five list, dead or alive, and put me after M. Is that short for M and M? So it wants to be put on the top five list of Goddess Rapers ranked right after Eminem. Yeah, okay, sure, that makes sense. There was something else he put in here that I like too. I'm all about that reel, about that reel. This ain't no motion, this ain't no motion picture. I like too this whole idea of, you know, they want to see me wearing polo drawers, put two chains on me, and then it run, but that ain't me. I like that. I don't need clothes or jewelry. Stand out. I like that. That's good. I like when they when artists push back against kind of industry standards or, or what have you. And I really liked how he did the whole, you know, put the pistol in my hand and I won't think, and then it kind of shifts to the sound. The blah, blah, blah. That was cool. I like that. Rap is stressing, but it pays great. <laughs> that is until you lose appeal and your release date gets date raped. Good play right there. Good play. All right, let's keep going. Verse two here. I know you know we need a few plaques too Shoot the brand new niggas with an attitude Chopping, Compton, uh, Tim Buck too I might even sell my new shit for Tim Bucks too Too ill when I shot these words Too ill when I shot the world I know life's a bitch When you know life's a bitch and that's not your girl Cold shit, I'm hot though, like cold get Absol, this is a shifting paradigm I remember when I couldn't spare a dime Now I step in with a paradigm On peace, y'all know me Flow like water, add more roti Be best off of ever to breathe uh, and as we proceed to follow these dreams, I ain't losing no sleep. No, no, one of the no dose. And it's no, no, this no dope. So high, but I'm so low. Two cups and I sip slow. Taking my time, we don't just shine. We illuminate the whole show. Now let's go. They want to share my life. They want to share my life. Good verse there. Verse two. That was good. Time and time I drop line for line, but only time will tell. If I ever go Caliban and cop 39s and cop back and kill. See, the truth is, they want to know how close me, Dre, and Snoop is. So the truth is, when they choose this to be Tupac, but you, I give two shits about Expectations of critics hating shit. I just put moms on vacation, bitch. You never know my new location. It's across nations. Court cases get thrown out. So tell a motherfucking king, they don't know. I am ruler. I am highness, the prince of Munda. I am this shit like what the prune does. Black on black tip like King Dakota. Black Back, bitch, I'm in the counter. Back on black crime, resent the shooter. Back, 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 I attend the neutral. Racks on racks, I don't rap on tracks without my A game. So please don't ask me about no pressure. Bitch, with the grip on my fingertip, I can hold this coast together. Goddamn. That was great. Uh, so, this part right here, see, the truth is, do I know how close me, Dre, and Snoop is? Which is a playoff of uh, uh, Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre has that. Yeah, what's the difference? Right, 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 right. Yeah, and who I'm so cool with. I am pretty familiar with Chronic 2001. I like that album quite a bit. That's one of the few albums I used to listen to that was rap before I started this whole rap journey. Goddamn, dude. <laughs> Kendrick? Kendrick, you know, that Kendrick guy, he's pretty good. That's a good feature. Someone should sign him. They should get him going. He did a pretty good job, man. God, the delivery, man. He's so crisp. That's what impressed me the most, too, at that show. He was just fucking tearing off lines live, killing it on the goddamn mic. Great job. There's a long ass annotation for this chorus of they want to share my light, they want to share my light. <clears throat> I'm not gonna read it. It's very it's very long, and who knows if it's you know how accurate it is or not. Cool track. You know, and that one's got a lot of listens, I, I assume just because Kendrick's on there and stuff, but I still think Lust Demons is way better. I love Lust Demons. <laughs> this is a good one too. Fucking, uh, let's talk at Ad Absol's verse here. The second verse is really good. Um, where the fuck was it? I remember when I couldn't spare a dime, so he's poor. Now I step in with a pair of dimes, and this is all rhyming after. This is a shift in paradigm, which is a you know a thought process or or a, well not. I was going to say lexicon, but yeah, thought process. A pair of dimes. So now he's got two tens, you know, two hot girls because he's got all this money. Y'all know me. Flow like water. Admiralty. <laughs> Great line. I like that a lot. That's fucking really good. And as we proceed to follow these dreams, I ain't losing no sleep. No, no on them no does. Just no, no if it's no dough. 
So if they're not going to pay him, he's not going to show up. So high up, but I'm so low. Two cups and I sip slow. Taking my time, we don't just shine. We illuminate the whole show. So as in, you know, make people more, more smarter, more brainlierly powered. That's a word. It is now anyway. Brain, brainlierly. That was one of my favorite South Park episodes. Look, look closer. I don't, I don't see anything. Look closelier. <laughs> oh my God. So I do that to a lot of words now. Cool track. Illuminate is cool. Not my favorite. Not my favorite. Track 11 is called Rebellion, and it's featuring Lori Joe, who was the uh, person who took her life, unfortunately, produced by Curtis King. It's going to be interesting to hear what she does. It's probably just supporting vocals, but here we go. Drop it in. Track 11, Rebellion. Oh, weird. Cool drum beat. Interesting. So I like that bridge a lot. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Because basically what's he what's he doing? Breathe, right? Calm down. Count to ten. Breathe. I'm all alone. Why? And what's he all alone on? I want to take this chopper, which is his gun, his AK, I think, right? Let's aim it at that copper who just locked up my partner. Like, I want to just mow down a bunch of people who, you know, <clears throat> they can't stop us. So he's got very dark, violent thoughts right now. Inhale. Exhale. Breathe. breathe. Now... You keep the idea of control system and kind of like I was saying earlier, how we don't have a lot of even control of our own bodies here. He's just trying to regain control of his own rage, right? Cause when you're that far, when you're just thinking about getting a gun and, and doing some things like that. And I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of self-centering cause I'm on fucking YouTube and YouTube will probably go, uh Oh, <laughs> bald white man discussing, you know, shootings. Because the fucking the scanning software doesn't understand context, they just filters for fucking things and then throws up red flags and shit, right? So I'm kind of using shitty, vague language rather than just saying what I want to say, which sucks because YouTube sucks. But fascinating that that inhale, exhale portion right there. Let's keep going. That's the joy. That's the jam. Turn it up. Play it again. That's the joy, that's the jam. Turn it up, play it again. That's the joy, that's the Who's bold enough to rebel? Turn it up. I might be all around that hater. Run right in the cathedral. Aim right at that preacher. Miseducating the people. I might be all alone on this one. I might be all alone on this one. I might be all alone on this one. I just want to take that banger and aim it right at my maker. Place me around all this danger. I can't even trust my neighbor. I want to pause it here too, even though there's only a couple seconds left. I just want to focus on the fact that there's a huge split. This is, this is a brilliant track. And I... It's tough because I don't know how many times I'd honestly listen to this song just because of the, the, the production or what have you. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not amazing. You know, it's not something I, I would rush to to like throw on a playlist or something like that. But what's being done in this song is fucking brilliant because I, he, he's trying to breathe, right? And he's talking about shooting up the police. He's talking about shooting up the preacher. He's talking about shooting his maker. Like... It's a rebellion against police and, and religion and society. And he, if we go to the very, very top, I might, you know, he's talking about, I might be alone on this one. I might be alone on this one. So he's not certain, you know, they can't stop us. 
There's that, that line right there. They can't stop us. And earlier in the album, somewhere, it was talking about, you know, if all the gangs would just join up, we could probably take on the military tonight. Not even the police, the military, right? So you've got that that going on. But then when he when he slips down further, there's, fuck, okay, okay, brain, one thing at a time. Because there's so many layers to this track. He's trying to control his own rage. But you've got this refrain. Where is it? That's the joint. That's the jam. Turn it up. Play it again. You know, uh, Alori Joe is, is singing that and he is doing the rebel, rebel. Who's bold enough to rebel? So I think on that portion of the song, that portion is, you know, he's listening to a song that's getting him fired up. Who's That's making him bold enough to want to rebel. Okay, I'm listening. that's the joint. That's the jam. Turn it up. Play it again. You know, building himself up, building himself up. While he's also doing this inhale, exhale, which is maybe trying to bring himself down, the song's got a split between I might be alone on this one, I might be alone on this one, because he's not sure, versus I know I'm alone on this one. So there's a split between, okay, even if I personally am bold enough to rebel, are others going to join me? On this category, maybe. On this one, no. So there's that split. And then there's almost like a spiritual rebellion too of, you know, he's talking about lashing out at his maker. I just want to take that banger and aim it right at my maker for placing me around all this danger. I can't even trust my neighbor. And that's a spiritual rebellion. So there's just so many fucking layers that are happening right here. Fascinating song. Fascinating song. And then it goes into, I know I'm alone. I know I'm all alone on this one. And that's after he talks about aiming at his maker and, you know, for, so basically saying, God won't even fucking help me. God put me here in this danger. Fascinating fucking track. Really cool. Really well done. Let's finish this up. There's only like 20 seconds left. I think that's a brilliant track. The hard part is as a song, as something to just listen to, you know, how often am I going to put something like that on? I don't know. Probably not very often, but that is a brilliant song. Brilliant song. Great jam. Fire jam. Fire jam. <laughs> I gotta remember to say jam. I don't even remember to tell people to go buy merch. I always forget. I just, whatever. You know, if they want to buy it, they'll buy it. Whatever. Life goes on. Fucking, that was fantastic. That was fantastic. Really good. Moving on to track 12, which is called Show and Love, produced by Willie B. God, that name sounds familiar. Hmm. All right. Track 12, Show and Love. Willie B. Ali. So. Cool. I like this little old sound sample here. Neat. Sagging to the floor, yeah. sagging through your turf like I own this fucking earth. Yeah. I saw my fucking life, I'm just living fucking life. This ain't house party five, but what's poppin' for the night? I got a little more dough to spend. Let's rest in peace up on the LB like Nate did. Y'all ain't smoking, y'all joking. Nugs, big as Chuck E. Cheese tokens, and I'm talking. <laughs> house on Skid Row, wait, this poke shit. Holy shit, I'm got sick. Admire my stick. It's 36 O's in the key. It's only one in that soul. Still open doors. Don't forget the dash. I might leave you with a gash. And I ain't doing no more shows. Less I'm getting cash. Feel full of hash. City on my back, nigga. Fucked around and put the llama on the map, nigga. I'm kind of not into this one. There's some cool wordplay. You know, it's 36 O's in a key, so I think that's ounces probably, I guess. Is it 36 ounces? Yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. Got that one right. I'm not from here. I'm, I'm of heaven descent. Which is a great, 
of heaven descent. So I'm from heaven, but I've descended down. You know, that, it's just cool. Shit like that's really neat. It's really neat. And it's real subtle, but it's well done. He sneaks it in there. Fucking cool. But I, yeah, I'm not really, I'm kind of not into this one. The production's a little funky. I liked how it started with the sample and then they, you know, kind of got funky with it, which was fine, but yeah, it's not really clicking with me too much. Nug's biggest Chuck E. Cheese tokens. <laughs> oh my God. What was it? Teddy, Rux Teddy Ruxpin. Somebody cracked off Teddy Ruxpin. Was that last week's album? Who did I listen to last week? Oh, uh, Roots. Maybe maybe it was Roots or maybe it was um, Lupe Fiasco. But man, I hadn't heard Te Teddy Ruxpin in a long time. And now Chuck E. Cheese. Holy shit, man. These guys are bringing all my childhood memories back to the surface. Anyway, let's keep going. I'm kind of not into this one. We'll see if it shakes up a little bit. But uh, good, good lyrics as usual. Do that shit. We done that shit. See, I wish they would have used a sample more. I like the sample that they used, but I don't like the way they broke it down. Honestly, eh, I'm not really into that one that much. Show and love, I will pass, unfortunately, on that one. Let's move on to track 13, which is called Empathy, featuring Lori Joe and Javante, produced by Sky Hutch. Empathy, track 13. <laughs> I got $700 from my last show And I would spend it all on you So baby, won't you fall on through Empathy Trippy, man Empathy Something I do enjoy about this album Even though from track to track It just, it just makes all these turns what comes next is very unexpected to me. It's very surprising to me. And even though I don't like every song and I, I kind of don't like the changes in sound, I do like that he's tr experimenting. You know, just, just going all over the place and just, just doing his thing. And, okay, we're going to make it like this. We're going to make it like that. And it's not all clicking for me, but I do like at least the attempt at variety, the experimentation that exists within this album thus far. Because this sound is very different from the previous which was very different from Rebellion, which was very different from Illuminate, very different from Lust Demons. Lots of, lots of variety, lots of range in this album. Empathy. Empathy. I like that little electronic sound. Lady, if you would just give me the time, you could leave all of your problems behind. You got a pass, but that's in the past, and we all know that. You can't press rewind. I understand we're all human. I'll lend you a hand if you wouldn't mind. Pan for you and stand for you, the man to make everything right. I guess things ain't going as well as you expected. Interesting track, man. Cool verse right there. What's neat about this track, too, is it comes off of showing love, which was basically just fucking rage. You know, pissing on the Declaration of Independence and... and <laughs> fucking hoes and showing love. Do that shit. We've done that shit. Now we're on that shit. It was... You know, showing love was pretty aggressive. And now you've got this, this contrast over to empathy. And it's really kind of neat to me just because... 
there's this this album has done a great job of like reflecting upon itself like here's a position and then here's the other side and then and then looking you know bouncing over there and now we're looking at this this portion and so it, just all of these i guess contrasts these dualities these conflicting ideas that all exist within this album which is kind of neat because it all exists you know in, in this theme this idea of a control system and maybe trying to establish a system of control for oneself for one's way of thinking for one's way of you know expressing emotion of dealing with emotion just everything it's really kind of fascinating on these deeper levels i like this track empathy this is pretty fucking neat but i think it's more so because of where it lists in the track listing itself you know this wouldn't if this was the opener i mean it, it wouldn't be the opener but if if it came after a different song you know, or at least, you know, if, if I had not heard Rebellion and Showing Love prior to this, I don't know if Empathy would have as much hit. So the themes, I don't know, I like the track order, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. I don't know why it took me 17 minutes to get there, but it did. <laughs> Let's keep going. <laughs> Cool production. I I wish it wasn't ending. It's only a three minute track. I wish it was gonna roll out. I would I would have loved like another forty five seconds of just kind of vibing there at the end. Interesting song. You know this idea of empathy and I guess things aren't going as well as you expected. Don't stress it. I understand. We're all human. I'll lend you a hand if you wouldn't mind. You know it just. Give me the time. You can leave all your problems behind. You got a past, but that's in the past. We all know that you can't press rewind. Empathy. Can you feel what I feel when I feel when I feel? Empathy. Huh. Cool song. I like that. That one gets a heart. I like empathy. Quite a bit. Fascinating album. Very fascinating. Let's move on to track 14, which is called Nothing's Something, produced by... I don't have any idea how to pronounce it. Uh, produced by this guy here. Can you see it on the screen? This guy. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce his name. It's got letters. It makes a word. There you go. <laughs> Track 14. Nothing's the same. Everything's supposed to be bad. Make me feel so good. Everything they told me not to I know exactly that. what oh, I would. I wish you take my shit. I know that. Why are they supposed to be to make me feel so good? Everything they told me not to exactly what it would. Is that Kanye? Yep. Addiction. Late registration. I was right. I, I didn't. I wasn't even trying to remember the song, but I, at least it was Kanye. I was right on that way. Let me back this up. A, a, a half a smidge. A quarter of a smidge. One quarter of one half of one smidge. What I, would. I wish a nigga would try to take my shit. Cause a nigga wish he could do it like this. I can't even take a piss without a nigga trying to take a pick. I just want to fuck a few hoes. Take my pick. Backwoods with the hash in them. Bad bitch. Skinny jeans. Fat ass in them. And I couldn't tell you how the world function. But I'm headed to the function. This shit ain't about nothing. No, that shit ain't about nothing. But it's gotta be something. They say I'm so selfish. I ain't thinking about nothing. This is making me something. Matter of fact, fuck that. I ain't worried about nothing. No, I ain't worried about nothing. It's always something. The cars, the clothes, the eyes. It's always oh, something. The stars, the moon, the light. So Again, this is just more contrast. More like self-reflection. More these conflicting ideas slamming into each other. It's always something, you know, I ain't worried about anything, but there's always something. And so that obviously just flies in the face of, I'm not worried about anything because if you're not worried about anything, then these little somethings that come up in life wouldn't bother you because you're not worried about it, but there is, there's always something. And so it's just this, this smashing of, I want to be free from these worries. I don't, I, these aren't worth worrying over. 
You know, it's just cars and clothes and fucking jewelry and who gives a shit. This isn't important, but it's always something. Always something I got to worry about. It's always something occupying my mind. And I don't know if that's exactly where he's going with it, but that's just kind of what I'm getting with it. <laughs> I can't even take a piss without a person trying to take a pick. It's so like, just being, you know, annoyed. I'm, I'm just trying to live my life and here's somebody trying to take a photo. But is that a big deal? No, but it's annoying and it occupies your mind. You know, it fills in that space. I just want to fuck a, just want to fuck a few hoes, take my pick. Backwoods with the hash in them. I don't understand what that means. Backwoods are cigars and you can use them for weed <laughs> or whatever you want. <laughs> Absol has hash in them. Great annotation. See, straightforward, to the point, very simple. Let's keep going. Interesting song so far. Hermes belt, sure to make your whole melt. It's a Miyaki all over my body, my heart beats, off beats, still the life of the party. YSL, iPhone, wireless cell, I'm high as hell. By the end of the night, I might need bell if a nigga touch my mic. I ain't a pitch for nothing in the discussion, and I couldn't tell you how the world function. But I'm headed to the function, it shouldn't bell nothing. No, that shouldn't bell nothing. But it's gotta be something, they say I'm so selfish. I ain't thinking about nothing. This is making me something. Matter of fact, fuck that. Interesting, man. Interesting. There's this line right here. This is, I think, is uh, incredibly important. And I can't find it. <laughs> it's in the bridge. I couldn't tell you how the world functioned, but I had, I'm headed to the function. The shit ain't about nothing. The shit ain't about nothing. But it's got to be something. They say I'm so selfish. Here it is right here. I ain't think about nothing. I'm so selfish, right? Never think about anything. Never think about anyone. I'm selfish. I'm selfish. I'm selfish. Unless it's making me something. So he only cares about something where he's going to make money. And this kind of outward criticism about how he doesn't think about anything and all this other shit. But the whole track is essentially these mental botherings that aren't important, that he can't stop thinking about. I don't know what YSL is, but you know, he's talking about fashion and all this other shit. And it's just these things that don't mean anything. They're worthless, they have no value, but they're so occupying his mental space. They're present in his life. It's just noise, noise, you know? Fascinating. Some of these fucking little tracks at the end have been really cool. Rebellion, fascinating. Empathy, pretty cool. Nothing something is really cool. We got three more tracks left. Track 15 is called Beautiful Death. I don't know if it's about um, if it's about uh, Alori or not. <clears throat> it's featuring Ash Riser and Punch, produced by Sky Hutz. Drop it in, track 15. Darker tone. My only fear is fear itself. I ain't afraid to die, more afraid of myself. Niggas looking at me like I don't hear myself, like I don't know pain. I've been here myself, hear myself. This life will drive you crazy. Only if you let it. I'm just an American expressing. Give me some credit. Won't be surprised <laughs> before play. I rise. I'm beheaded. These are the days of our lives. Nightmares of a thief come and taking my life. I go to sleep thinking that I may never wake up. In this reality, at least I keep my bed made up. Don't be so afraid to die. So I want to pause here because this is in yellow, which usually means it's an affirmed. Oh, I can't. That's a different website. Well, let's keep going then. I let's keep going. I would keep listening. He's got some interesting words. It's confusion and chaos, blatant disorder, authorities picking on the minorities. Unfortunately, the land of the free is little to offer me and got me off to think about offering me. I wake up in the morning and I ask myself. It's life worth living, should I blast myself? I'm tired of being broken, even worse. The upper class act like they don't want me on this earth. This life will drive me crazy. Only if you allow it, that's only if you a coward and you're sure to get devoured. There's a line in here, who's going to take a stand? Who's going to be a man? Who do you work for? Please help me understand. And then it's mentioned off to the side, the man. And one of the things I personally believe is it's, it's happening. It's, it's February of 23 and we just got through this crazy like inflation spike and what have you. But I feel like lately it's just blood being squeezed from the stone. Like the machine 
the powers that be, whatever the fuck you want to call American life, it's just squeezing and squeezing and squeezing. And eventually there is a breaking point. Eventually. And I, my kind of belief is, I've always felt... Because you see stuff on the internet like, how come Americans don't protest more? And how come they don't do this? And, you know, like in Paris, they'll fucking burn their goddamn city down before they have to work like a 10-hour day, right? <laughs> and uh, yeah, cool. Go for it. Have a blast. Um, I've always felt that American society, because for the most part, our lives are pretty comfortable. And again, I say for the most part because that's not true for everybody, obviously. Because we know that, even though we know there are things that are seriously wrong in this country, that are seriously broken, that need to be fixed, and it'll probably only happen via mass protesting. I feel like we also know that in doing so, we have to sacrifice our comfort. Like the amount of actual protesting it'll take to change the structure that exists in this country is going to have to be massive, wide scale, everyone disruptive meaning we have to sacrifice the comfort that are that's in our lives to finally get the change that is needed in my opinion and so i've always felt like well that's why we don't protest because in the back of our heads i feel like we all kind of know even if we don't know like it's 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 an all or nothing type deal which is kind of interesting given some of the stuff that we've talked about in this album so far today but I have this fear now as this this machine clamps down on all of us and all of us. And God, I, don't, I honestly don't know with food prices where they are now and wages stagnant and all this other shit. I don't know how people are surviving. I don't know how they were surviving 10 years ago or during the financial crash, 2008. I don't, but now it just it seems like it just keeps getting worse and the machine is just going to keep squeezing because that's what it does it just wants more it just wants to feed and leech vampire more that's all it's going to do until the host finally lashes back and i kind of feel like when that snap happens it's going to be a full break like i don't feel like it's going to be a, a crack it's going to be a full break. Although maybe that's not true because, you know, during 2016 or 2020, 2020, it was 2020. That year was pretty rough. Lots of protests and stuff like that. And then it kind of calmed down again. But man, when it gives, it's going to fucking give. It's going to be everybody. But the control system that's in place via corporate media, via politicians and political ideologies and, and, buzz topics and all these things that divide us the people the masses the hundreds of millions of people who actually run this country who are the life and blood of the country until we join together and stand together it won't happen and it, you know, the song is called beautiful death i don't know let's keep going and see if he actually talks on beautiful death but i don't even remember what the whole point of that rant was but there you go <laughs> <laughs> Old man talks to camera for three hours. <laughs> Pardon my immortality. I'm Martin Luther shooting back on that balcony. Escaping the Lorraine until they called in the Calvary out for 184. Oh Lord, nobody blast for me. If it takes me to be a martyr to push the envelope farther, nigga, show me to the slaughter. I gladly sacrifice what is perceived. So my seed, so my seed can live his dreams. My spin image, see my stitching in his jeans. According to my likeness, his breath of life is priceless. My enlightenment, the ancient Chaldeans penetrated America's culture to its very being. It's not political, it's more critical. Spiritual warfare, you can murder me in the physical. But I advise y'all to keep me alive in the event of my demise. I'll be bigger than life, beautiful. Oh. Travel the seven seas in hopes for a little peace. They promise pie in the sky and dying to get a piece. Put down your peace. I wish you all a beautiful death. Peace. This is a fascinating experience. <clears throat> I really am enjoying it. You know, he's talking about tragedy after tragedy. I know it's sad to see America killing her babies like Casey Anthony. <laughs> but I kind of feel like America the idea of America, what America is now compared to the idea of what it's supposed to be. The current America is basically like this just zombie. Like, yeah, there it is, but it's not what it's supposed to be. It's It's been killed. It's been 
you know, uh, infected with this disease that now has control over it where it's trying to consume the thing it's supposed to set free instead. And there's a lot of fucking reasons for that. And I wish I could provide you know an answer that was easy, but it's not easy. It's not straightforward. It's, you know, we hear the word systemic all the time. It is systemic. It's like foundational. It's built into the system. It is the system. And, you know, there are times, too, when I think about this, what I'm doing right now. Because I want to provide something that's on the Internet that is positive, that's a little bit more constructive, that's a little bit thought-provoking, hopefully. Just just something good, I suppose, you know? There's so much toxic shit online that we can soak our brains in and just poison ourselves to death with if we want to. But then I think about these lyrics that I'm analyzing and and reading and trying to understand and the message that's being shared here. And and I just think, you know, maybe this is part of the problem too. You know, I just talked about how people in America won't give up their comforts to go protest for what is right. And look at where I live. You know, I am part of that problem. I am not active in trying to change things. And that's something I think about. That's something that I I am aware of. And then when I really drill down and go, okay, well, what does that mean? What are you going to do? Are you going to live in comfort? Or are you going to go fight with what you know you think is right? What are you going to do? Here's your fucking answer, you know? And honestly, as weird as it sounds, as much as I love to rail against uh, those who are in control, you know, the elite, the powerful, whatever you want to call it, right? <clears throat> One thing that upsets me about them is how greedy they are because if they weren't so fucking greedy if they would just let people live a little bit more in comfort kind of kick trickle down some of the money so there wasn't so much poverty trickle down the money so that you know people could feed their fucking kids and live in their own house and so on there would be absolutely no threat of rebellion of uprising of protest whatever you want to call it there would be no pushback But these fuckers in control are so greedy. They want everything. They have to have everything. And it's always their downfall. You look through history, especially like French history, man. It's, it's, I mean, it's just, it's, it's kind of sad because we as a species are so predictive. (laughs) We think we're so clever and so smart and we're not. (laughs) We're just not, not smart at all. Very, very dumb, very predictable. Anyway, this has been a fascinating experience. Uh, let's move on to track 16, which is called The Book of Soul. I believe the last one, Black Lip Bastard, is like a bonus track. So I will keep in mind that this is the conclusion of the album, technically speaking. I'll do the last track too, but I'm just mentally, last song of the album. Uh, it's produced by Tommy Black. Let's jump in. Track 16, Book of the Soul, or Book of Soul. Interesting sounds. Your mama told me read the book of Job. They should have called it the book of soul. I came into this hurtful earth in perfect health. Called Stephen Johnson syndrome when I was 10 years old. Internal and external fever, 80%. Fatality rate at that time, ain't that some shit? Wow. Ironic, we always had the same classes. I copied off your work, and you ain't always had the right answers, but it worked. <laughs> Mama, thanks a lot. Probably wouldn't have even graduated had you not. Somewhere down the line, we became an item. The love was in the air like this flight I'm lighting. It was supposed to end with our grandkids. Luckily for me, I'm used to being cut short. I'm such a nice guy. Why, Lord? Why, Lori? Why you had to take her from me? I was wondering if it was going to be about her or not. I don't, I, you know, I don't know their history. I didn't, I didn't know if they went to school together. I, it's, I was kind of starting to assume this was going to be about her, but I wasn't positive, and now we know. All right, let's 
Let's push through a bit. Guess he needed your angel face for all of heaven to see. Your picture's still on my mirror and it's so scary. I swear I still ain't looked at your obituary. So now I'm so doped up, I think I'm flying. I hope the split will never finish. I guess the Mayans wasn't lying. 2012, my world ended. Everything I love the most gets taken away. My mama and music is next. And if that happens before I turn 28, then I'm going out with Kurt Cobain. I still believe in God. We just ain't never spoke. Unless we talking symbolically, then I might agree. But if you really want to look at it that way, then hey, man, God don't like me. Don't be dethroned by these systems of control. Just keep your fingers crossed and get them locks off your soul. I'm stirred. I'm trying to calm down so I could talk. I mean, that was, that was well done. Well done. Um, these final lines. Don't be dethroned by these systems of control. Just keep your fingers crossed and get them locks off your soul. I really like that. Because, you know, I was talking about the very, very beginning, right? Uh the the monks who think the only question worth considering is whether or not to commit suicide and here we have him talking about Lori who jumped um and <clears throat> you know i take that perspective the only question to consider not in a negative way because it sounds dark right when somebody says that like wow that's dark but it's uh, to me it's not dark it's it's light to me it's it's the accepting of this is life. This is what it is. And I'm going to agree to the terms and the conditions, right? So to speak. And I'm going to go on the ride that is life. I'm going to be here instead of leave. And not everyone makes that decision. And there's an interview with Chester Bennington. I think it was Howard Stern or something. It was shortly before he killed himself. And it's really interesting because he's just talking about his thoughts like how dark his thoughts were and how just they they didn't even feel like his own like it just felt like somebody else was in his head saying these things and so mental health is obviously a, a big part of this i don't know anything about Lori. i'm not going to try and pretend but all i want to do say is don't be dethroned by these systems of control just keep your fingers crossed and get them locked off your soul and i take that to mean Go on the ride and don't worry about it. Hope for the best. Do what you can, but keep the locks off your soul. Be you. Be you. Whatever that means, be you. Now, you know, don't be a terrible person. <laughs> right? Like, oh, okay, great. I'm an asshole. I'm going to go be an asshole. No, don't. Try not to be an asshole. Right? We got plenty of those. We don't need more of those. Keep the locks off your soul. Get them locks off your soul. I love that because that's that's the one thing you do have control over. And there was a track earlier. Maybe it was Beautiful Death. I can't remember. It was just talking about, you know, these things are driving him fucking crazy. Or it might have been nothing something. <sighs> you know, we... The what we don't have control of what happens in life. We can do certain things. We can try, you know, influence, and you know, we can stand for things. There are things we can do. We can take action, kind of like what he said at the beginning of the album. We can take action, but taking action does not dictate outcome. You know, tomorrow or Sunday, the Eagles and the Chiefs are playing for the Super Bowl. Everybody on that field that's going to take action to win the Super Bowl, only half the people are going to win that game. But that's just how it goes. But you can keep the locks off your soul. You can go, you know. Well, that's what was neat about the Lil Yachty album with that failure section where he's talking about failure and just this idea of, you know, it, you know, if somebody breaks into my house, you know, maybe they needed that stuff more than I did. And, you know, this idea of it could be worse and you're kind of wandering into positive thinking there. But keep the locks off your soul. That's what you do have control over, your soul in a sense. 
what we focus on, what we care about, what we, what we stress over. And that's hard. Right now, my wife is struggling with work. There's some things going on and, and it's fine, but her brain is just fixating on certain things. And she's aware of that. We're talking about it from time to time, but it's hard sometimes. That fucking brain will not shut up sometimes. So you practice, you know, there's things you can, there's lots of stuff, neat stuff on YouTube where you can watch talk, talk about, you know, meditative states and calming your thoughts and fixating on positive rather than negative. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff. I, I really hate social media because of all the negative shit that exists there. I try and I stay away from it. Like I don't have, I only have Twitter just because of the channel. You know, put yourself somewhere positive. That's what you do have control over even though it can be challenging. And something else I want to say, because I'll just talk forever, why not? <laughs> when you fail at being positive, don't beat yourself up. You go, you know what? Fuck. <laughs> okay, try again. You just try again. It's practice, like everything is practice. Fascinating album. It took me a little while to warm up to it, but fascinating album. Really cool really cool i don't have it's not like i have hearts next to every single song it's kind of hit or miss for me honestly but really fascinating album god damn all right let's move on to the final track which is essentially a bonus track it's called black lip bastard which i kind of like that it comes at the end because i didn't know about this this illness that absol had and that the pigmentation of his lip actually changed grew back darker than its original pigment that's wild i didn't even know that was a thing Stevens Johnson syndrome. Hmm. All right, final track of Control System. It's featuring Black Hippie. It's produced by Willie B. Track 17, Black Lip Bastard. This is what you really want. Huh? <coughs> Turn me up, Ali. I know your <laughs> image of me is what I hope to be. Black lip bastard, pass me your password so I can hack inside your brain. See, I too have gone insane before I fall. I'm sure to curse you all in Jesus' name. Lead shower and the pebble hour, bitch, stand the ring. What you really want? Let me I, get it back, Ali. What we doing? What we doing if you was the last about no movies? Yeah, I'm good. No crews, no, no posse, no clips. If it ain't about TV, I wanna hear this shit. Look inside my parking garage and see a collage of every person I despise since the moment I turned five. Calculate my steps and strategically took my time. Even falling off, I land on the ass of Nicki Minaj. <laughs> Eat that pink pussy like it's Friday. Bust one, Roman reload, then smoke the shot day. What can I say? I'm a bastard with black lips, black shirt, black shade, long black dick. I'm off with dog, I'm trying to bargain shop at Sex Fit. Swung two axes and knock the earth off facts is ass. I gotta I gotta read this because I don't get it. I told I told people caught caught wrecked, then I towed them, fold them like clothes and drawers. Homie chose to go toe to toe. I had to break his leg like a cliche to a rock show. Is that over your head? It is over my head. I don't get it. Soul interweaves the literal and figurative meanings of two expressions. Performers are often told to break a leg. Yes, yeah, sure. Before they go on stage, right? When somebody tried to step to soul. He rocked so hard that he ended up literally breaking the other guy's leg. That's trying to. Oh. At the end, he sneaks another body part relation idiom. Oh, okay, okay. I guess I I guess I did get it, but it made it anyway. Maybe not. <laughs> kind of a cool sound, cool beat. I kind of remember. I'm kind of the reminder of knowing Compton ain't kind of cool. Good kid, mad city, mountaintops, couldn't see my views down in the valley in Compton. Mm. This bit about Nikki, even falling off, I land on the ass of Nikki Minaj. <laughs> so soft. Huh. Cool track. Let's just keep going. I'm kind of in, I'm kind of in, oh, I didn't understand this. You're basic like cable to a satellite dish. She was running LA. Now you out there like fish. Who's fish? Derek Fisher used to run the point. Oh, is that true? Is that? Or it could be like a fish out of water. Sure. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, let's keep rolling here. So. I like the beat. How it has that kind of like hesitation a little bit. 
do is do it. All we do is do it. All we do is do it. So for the living fabric, I won't have it. When a gun's wrong, you better t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t t I'm J Rock, huh. you know the niggas beneath me. How you gon' dance with the devil with two left feet? Feet, thinking you sweet, but you weak. Talking out of turn and leave all of your teeth in the street. Mama taught you better. Never clash with a giant unless you gave her. Remember, my nigga, I'm not gon' lie. I'm feel the raft of this titan. Hit some water, call it Poseidon. Wig out, then hit your ass with a trident. Money on the table, my nigga, you know I'm all in. If rap was a drink, you wine, nigga, I'm all gin. Honey proof, we do the honey truth, you love this shit. No fluke, my nigga, you know that's what us hunters do. Kind of interesting to hear a younger Kendrick. <clears throat> He's changed a lot. He's grown a lot. Fascinating album. It took me a while to warm up. I still don't really know. Actually, no, I, I'm, I like Absol. I'm cool with Absol. The first couple tracks, man, I don't know. It'll be interesting to go back and hear him again. Um, it just took a little while to settle in. Lust Demons is my favorite track. I love that track. The sound is fucking. The production's amazing on that one. That's my favorite one. Uh, Terrorist Threats was really cool with Danny Brown in there. Pineal Gland was cool. I like even mixed emotions, even though it was just weird. It's off putting. It's a kind of a cool track. Rebellion, Empathy, Book of Soul. Very impressive. Cool album. Cool album. I'm just trying to kind of wrap up the concept in my head this control system and it's neat because the album has a lot of layers and it seems to be pretty self-aware of itself itself i just say it for the third time since i said it twice <laughs> you know there every now and then you'll hear i'll hear some tracks where it's like, okay, they're talking about this, talking about that. And then a couple tracks later, it's kind of the opposite. And it doesn't really seem to acknowledge the duality. This is definitely acknowledging the duality. It's definitely very reflective of itself. It, it considers an idea and then it like bounces to the other side of the mirror or the opposite mirror. And then it bounces the other way. And it's almost like a house of mirrors and how it's just analyzing all these different ideas and concepts. Yeah, fucking cool, man. Really fucking cool. I just got to sit on it for a while now. Just soak in it. It's a lot of music. Hour and 11, you know, two, two hours and 40 minutes for the video. It's a lot to take in. And there's some tracks that were like, we, like Sopa. Weird fucking track, man. Weird track. Showing love. It's just kind of, yeah. Hmm. Good times. Good times. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out for the rest of the week with me and listening to it more and what I get into and if if more things click. I was already thinking too, like as I was just kind of floating through that one, there were a bunch of lines that I missed. There was one, it was fairly early. I think it was Pineal Gland. It was talking about we live in, matter, we live in a space where matter doesn't matter. And so time and space and how matter is mostly space. And I didn't even mention that, I don't think, during the track. Just some really cool lines, really cool concepts. Yeah. My brain is just like diddle, 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 diddle right now. <laughs> Good shit. All right, y'all. Take care. We'll see you soon.